This was meant to be my uh, kind of warm up intro, get you guys laughing because it's early in the morning. But we can keep watching, it's pretty funny actually. <laughs> <laughs> I love it because it's true. Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, wow, you guys actually say good morning back. I was in New York last week, and like, no one says anything back. They stare at me angrily. Uh, so June 17, 2015, Technical Committee 39 released, finalized, and approved ECMAScript 6, ES6, if you will. Proper term is ES 2015. And this was good because JavaScript for so long had been <laughs> so bad. Part of being a good engineer was knowing the bad parts from the good parts. I don't know about you, I have both these books at home. Anybody? Yeah, they, I'm glad. Everybody knows where I'm coming from. So with ES 6, we had so many good things. People that hated language were finally coming back. Modules, literals, promises, generators, all sorts of good stuff. And now we're a real language, right? Well, there's one problem. People that, well, let's say they stay out of the loop. They stay off Twitter. They don't like to do a lot of reading. They come to the language and say, what is all this? I don't, I don't understand what's going on. There's so much new stuff to learn. And they bandy about the word JavaScript fatigue. And it's true. There's a lot to learn. But we had a lot of catching up to do from, well, the bad years. We won't talk about them. But I've got good news. I've got bad news. The bad news is, you're going to have to learn some new stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, the good news is it's going to be awesome. It's going to change the way you think about code. It's going to change the way you think about everything. It's going to change the way we build web applications. I know this sounds like an exaggeration, but just bear with me. It's going to be awesome. So as my client MC said, I'm Jem Young. I'm a senior UI engineer at Netflix. Uh, and if you don't know what Netflix does, um, we're in the happiness business. We just want to make it so after you get home after a long day of coding, you can just sit home on the couch with your loved ones or your cats or your dogs, whoever, maybe all of them, and you just watch a good TV show. My personal favorite, I love The Great British Bake Off. Fantastic show. It's so silly that me, a large man who likes dogs and I like motor racing and uh, I love baking. It's fantastic. I, I love it. Uh, next favorite, Jessica Jones. Great show. So today we're going to talk about TC39 ECMAScript service workers, and the future. Future of the web, future of JavaScript. So an important question is, why should you listen to me? You should always ask that if you're reading a blog post or Twitter or anybody speaking, say, what, what makes them qualified to speak about this? Well, one, on the train ride up from London yesterday, I built a thing. Uh, if you guys want to do me a favor and go here on your phone, uh, Android works best, but just go here now. Trust me, it'll pay off longer in the end. But I built this yesterday. It's a progressive web app, nothing fancy. Um, it's responsive, not really. Um, <laughs> it's mobile first, and by when I say mobile first, that means I was too lazy to do CSS. That's what that means. But check that out. So I spent a lot of time doing these things. I've discovered the pitfalls, the edge cases, the, the really bad stuff that's not documented. I'm here to teach you about that, so you don't make the same mistakes I do. But really, why should you listen to me? Because I'm passionate. The things I talk about, I talk about with all the energy of someone newly born to religion. I talk about fervor and energy and just all the excitement I can muster. And I'll probably work up a good sweat by the end of this. If I don't, I'm not doing things properly. But that's why you should listen to me. But as always, take my advice with a grain of salt. Walk your own path. I am but a small drop in the large ocean that is JavaScript. So take my advice as you will. Let's talk a bit about 
TC39 and ECMAScript. TC39, Technical Committee 39. I know, it sounds old and stodgy. It kind of is a little bit, just kidding. I know some people on the committee. What it is is they're the people that determine the future of JavaScript. They say these things are going to go into, into ECMAScript. What's ECMAScript? Well, ECMAScript is a standard. JavaScript is an implementation of that standard. So is JScript and ActionScript. JScript, as we know, was Microsoft's ill-conceived attempt to fork JavaScript. It failed. Boo. Thank goodness. That would have been a real mess. ActionScript. Who knows what ActionScript is? Yes, from Flash. That's going away, too. Boo. That leaves the winner JavaScript. Awesome. We're all, we're all winners today. So now we know what ECMAScript is. So now when someone says ES6, you know they're talking about just ECMAScript. Because I get that a lot. People say, why isn't it JS6? It's actually ECMAScript 6. So let's talk about ES7, or should I say ES2016. That's the actual proper nomenclature. You're saying, man, there's, there's probably a lot of stuff in ES7. Because ES6 had all this crazy stuff, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around proxies and what they do. No, no, no. ES7, so we got two things in it. The ray dot includes and the exponentiation operator. It's fantastic. And this is the way JavaScript was meant to be. ES6 is just catch up here. We're just catching up from all the bad parts. And then we do slow incremental releases. So you kind of just a slow ramp up. Let's talk a bit about ray dot includes. Now, one last question, and then I'll stop bothering you guys. Who here has done index of on array when you're trying to find something? Yeah, everybody. It's the, it's the only way, right? You can do a for in loop. Or you can do a for loop. That's terrible. Ray dot includes is the natural evolution of that. It returns a Boolean. So it's true or false. Does this thing exist or not? Easy. Really easy. And you're thinking, this should have been the language to start with. I know. I'm 100% with you. Bonus. Works with not a number. Not a number does not work with index of. Probably didn't know that. I didn't know that before either. But now we all learned something about that. Exponentiation operator. Don't let the weird kind of funky syntax fool you. Just sugar on math.pal. Now you guys are 100% caught up on ES7. <laughs> Experts. That's it. You, I mean, you guys are solid. You, you could be up here speaking. I should go sit and watch because I'm actually pretty tired because the sun, you know, just comes up so early here, 4 in the morning. Ugh, it's crazy. Let's talk a bit about ES Next. This is not an official term by TC39. This is something that the community and people like myself, they say, hey, this is what is going to be in JavaScript coming up. So JavaScript has five stages, starting from stage zero to stage four. Stage zero is just straw man. You say, hey, I've got this crazy wild idea, and I want you guys to attack it. So two things that are in it. Uh, string prototype pad start. Anybody remember the left pad controversy? Broke the internet. Yeah, this is a natural addition to that. So. It's good to have, again, all these things, they should have been a language to start with, but now we're catching up. It's all right. We're, we're a great language. We're, we're great engineers. Next, pad end. Same thing. Give it max length. Default is a blank string. You can give it any string you want, and it'll just add padding. Fantastic. It's nice to have it. Solid. Object values, object entries, and get own property descriptors. I'm going to kind of skim through these a little bit because, honestly, they're a little boring, and <laughs> I have more exciting things to talk about. But Object that values is correlated to object that keys. We've used it to get the, the keys on an object. Value the same thing. Entries is just the arrays of key value pairs. Easy. Property descriptors. I want to get into that because 99% of people don't use it. And if you want, I'll talk to you later about it. It's kind of interesting, but don't worry about it for now. Let's talk about something really exciting. Service workers. I, I wish the microphones weren't here because I'd be like, service workers. Service workers are amazing. They're revolutionary. They're going to change the way we think about code, change the way we think about applications. And it's not just me that thinks this. A lot of smart people from a lot of well-known engineering groups, uh, meetups, just all over the internet are going wild about service workers. Nicholas Vavaka said it best at ponyfoo.com. Fantastic site, fantastic engineer. But he says everything seems to point at service worker being the most significant addition to the web platform since Ajax. Now, I don't know about you, but when I saw Ajax for the first time, my mind was blown. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. You loaded that cat picture and you didn't refresh the page? It's incredible. And this guy, much smarter, much better engineer than I, is saying this is more significant than Ajax? Whoa. So what is that? Well, a service worker is persistent, fully asynchronous, separately threaded event-based worker with the ability to intercept network requests and cache responses. <laughs> I know. Some, I think there's someone in the back asleep already. 
I know, it's really dull, it's really boring, but I learned best by example. So let's do an analogy. Web worker. Tried, true, it's awesome. Not really utilized, but it'll get the job done. A service worker is like a web worker on steroids. Ugh. It's, so, it's so good, it's almost like cheating, if you will. <laughs> but a service worker is just amazing. So how do we use a service worker? Well, here's the web. You got your web page, you have the internet. The internet's it's full of cats, right? So your web page, it's a great site, and it says, give me cats. And the internet's like, OK. And you get cats. That's the entire internet. It's really easy. You'll need a degree for that. So where does a service worker come in? Service worker sits in between the web page and the internet. So when your web page says, give me cats, service worker just says, OK. Because it intercepts fetch requests, and it just returns that straight from memory, instantaneously. Done. Easy. That's just one small part of service worker. But this is definitely one of the better parts. So let's break this out just a little bit. Service worker is persistent. It exists outside the browser tab and it knows when it expired. It automatically updates itself. Pretty awesome. Just like a web worker, it runs in a separate thread. So you can run three, four, five, eight cores, however many you want, all running JavaScript, not blocking the main UI thread. But the important thing to note is it doesn't die when the tab is closed. You close that tab, the service worker is still there in the background. It might be asleep, but it's still there. A service worker is also fully asynchronous. You can't use local storage, you can't use XHR, and you have to use promises. And if you don't know promises, well, it's 2016, got to get on it. But they're really pretty straightforward. And if you need help, I am always available on Twitter or just send me an email. But you have to know promises and know service workers. Service worker is event based. Just like a web worker, you can't control from the main thread. I can't create a, a function or method and a service worker and call it from the UI thread. And it uses four main events, install, activate, fetch, and post message. I know I'm kind of running through these, but I have so much to cover. And <laughs> trust me, I'll put these slides up later. But like we saw earlier, the service worker can intercept network requests, and it can modify the requests and responses. Now hopefully, some of your gears are turning now. Some of you guys are getting excited, you know, a little bit of energy, that coffee's hitting you now. Because this is so cool. This is so powerful. If you don't see it, I have some great demos later. And also, you can cache responses. It has a cache storage, caches API, brand new stuff. And events, so you could do add event listener, or you could do on activate, on install, on fetch, on message. I prefer on activate that style, but either way it works. I just don't want you to get confused because a lot of examples on the web use both, and it's really tricky. So how do I use this super awesome technology you've been going on and on and on about? So you just check a service worker is available in Windows Not Navigator, and you just register it. That's it. Nothing to it. A few lines. Shortly, it's going to be down to one line. Chrome has a proposal right now. Uh, I don't want to share it because I hate to jump the gun. I don't want to get everybody excited and you flame me on Twitter later saying, that didn't happen, Jim, you big liar. But I don't want to be that guy. So in the install event, that's when we want to do our caching. And I'm not going to talk too much about caching and offline because there's another great talk later. Um, and it's going to be fantastic and it's going to do a much deeper dive. But let's do a shallow wade on offline. So let's start in the junior leagues, trikes. Remember we said we can cache things and when we get the fetch event, we just return that easily? That's what this code does. Don't worry, it's a lot of code. I'm flying through it. I'll show you later. But let's see a quick demo. So I'm just going to fire up this uh, RESTify server, go to my local app. Oh, it's called Gibby Cats. It's a good name. And we get some cats. You know, these are all great cats. Uh, but let's go ahead and kill that server. And let's refresh the page. Will it work? Yes, it does. Easy. That was, that was really easy. But that, that, was, that was Junior League stuff. Let's, let's move up to kind of uh, heavy tier. And Ola, she uh, going to have a great talk later on called Offline. Much deeper dive. Much smarter than I am about this stuff. That was just a shallow way into it. But let's move to uh, kind of the medium leagues. That's actually kind of bike I ride, single speed. It's great. Not in San Francisco, the hills, my knees, getting old. So on Activate is another event we listen to. We can connect a WebSocket to it. So what does that look like? Let's go and see another demo. Let's fire up this RESTify server, and let's connect to it. And the WebSocket's pushing. Pretty easy. You guys have seen that before. I still love WebSockets. To me, it's still magical. 
Eh, let's go ahead and kill it. Oh, the server's still pushing, but that's probably, it's probably a fake event, you know, a ghost, an error. But let's just fire up that tab again and see what's happening. Oh, it's still connected. What did we say earlier? That service worker doesn't die when the tab is closed. That's impressive. What can we do with this? Push notifications, background synchronization, all sorts of things I haven't even thought of yet. All right, so now, now we're revved up. Energy is getting a little high. We're getting, we're getting serious now. This is, this is serious. This is serious code. This is for the, the great engineers of the world, future great engineers, all of you. Whew. That's, that's a lot of code. I know it's really dense, and I just don't have enough time to go into it, but I'll tell you what it does. It does translation on the fly. So I hate translation. No, no, no. I love translation, but I hate the work that goes into it. So this does this on the fly. So when my main UI thread fetches JavaScript, it says, hey, are you using Chrome 52, using Opera, the latest version? Well, that's ES6 compatible. Just, let's just send that code through. If not, if you're using, say, I don't know, Safari, aka the new Internet Explorer, it sends through transpiled code, ugly. But all this happens on the client side. You don't have to think about it anymore. That's really powerful. This is, this is changing the game. It's changing the way we think about code. So let's talk about the future of the web. What is the future of the web? For one, it's FIDO. Fast identity online. We're all bad at passwords. Uh, I know, personally, my mom thinks password 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is a strong password because it's 13 characters. And statistically, one of you in this room has, this pass has that password. Sorry, I don't want to call you out on your uh, LinkedIn account or anything. So fast identity online is a way of using biometric data to log into a website. Uh, I saw a great demo at a Microsoft Edge conference where they use facial recognition to log in. It's fantastic. This is the future of the web. Web Bluetooth. There's a talk later on it, so I won't go too much into it, but the ability to physically connect to your hardware from a web page, it's just JavaScript. And Dan has a great talk later called Getting Physical on Web Bluetooth. I'm really excited about that because I know it's going to be awesome. This stuff is amazing. So what's a progressive web app look like? You've probably heard the word progressive web app, but all it means is web application that looks and feels kind of like a native application. The point is it works normally. It degrades gracefully. Should I say it ascends gracefully? My motto is from Futurama. When you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. So if you're using an older browser, your web app works normally. It's just a website. If you're using a modern version, say Chrome or Firefox, you get offline capabilities, you get background synchronization, you get push notifications, you get all the latest stuff, and it looks just like a native app. So what is the future of the web? Well, if you guys go back to that page in your phone right now, go ahead and check it out. If I've done things right, and I was doing it on a terrible train Wi-Fi, you should have a little add to home screen button. If not, uh, you can just click add to home screen in your menu, and you'll see what the future of the web kind of looks like. Progressive web application installed into your, your phone's uh, home screen. It looks just like a native application. It's almost seamless. Hopefully that works. If not, I'll show you guys later. So what is the future of the web? Well, service workers, progressive web applications, JavaScript evolution. JavaScript's going to keep evolving. We're going to keep learning, and it's going to keep getting a better and better language. But mostly, the future of the web is you. I am. <laughs> I'm not the smartest one in the room. Maybe not even third smartest. <laughs> I'm kidding. All, all of you are the future. I, I am such a lazy engineer. I don't want to learn new stuff. I want to just use somebody's library. I want to be able to fix it if I want to. I want to look at the source code. But mainly, I want to learn from you. You guys are the future. I'm just one person who does some bumbling around the web. And you know, occasionally, nice people let me come up here and speak about it. But you guys are definitely the future, 100%. You're saying, oh, Jim, I, wet, I weep because everything's been conquered already. JavaScript has no new frontiers. You're already talking about the great stuff of service workers. There's smarter people than me working on it. No, that's not true. Remember, uh, we talked about Ajax? When did Ajax come around? 2005? What's the backbone of Ajax? XHR? When did that come around? 99, 2000? Five years! Five years in JavaScript land is, an, is a lifetime. And no one figured that out for five years. So let's say you guys in, I don't know, six months, all of you great engineers, what are you going to come up with in six months, a year? 
Scotland GS 2017, and I look forward to seeing some amazing, amazing talks from you. Here's a few links. I know I flew through this. A lot of great stuff in here. Um, good reading, service workers, offline cookbook, Jake Garswald, a fantastic engineer, one of my programming heroes. He has a much better explanation of service workers. Um, I have some dabblings with Babel and uh, web workers, things like that. But explore away. We, we live in such an age where never before has so many people had so much power to build and create things. You could build the next Uber, next Facebook, next any app you want. You have that power today. You just have to do it. That's fantastic. I'm around the web. I'm on GitHub as young. I'm on uh, the rest of the web as Jim Young. Send me dog pictures on Twitter. I know I talked about cats. I'm really a dog person, but I have a cat. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.